year of the tiger. Because we Tibetans are always, you know, we will talk about, oh, Temri Sangwe Chung Song, Temri Yawo Chung Song. But Temri is also created by ourselves. So therefore, so we must always make sure that we create the right Samaya, right Temri. So I think this, in my opinion, has been one of the most auspicious New Year for us. Your brothers and sisters in Tibet knew that. That's why, under tremendous threat to their life, not hundreds, thousands of them, I mean, many of them have heard people lined up for four hours to get into Johan, but they still couldn't do that. Why? Because they knew that this was you know, auspicious year for us. So I just wanted to, you know, since there are so many Tibetans, especially a lot of young people, have come from many parts of the United States, <clears throat> just to re-emphasize the importance of celebrating our great heritage. This is how you can also make the next generation know something about our culture, feel very proud. You know, when you sort of, you know, hear from your elders, you know, because through, you know, celebrations such as Losa, we know the glory of our past. But is that just enough that we just basket on the glory Certainly not, but that's also very important for us to know who we are. So I thought that first, you know, I'll just take advantage, you know, talk a little bit of uh, Losa and uh, really greet you all and say that this is going to be, in my view, a very, very aus auspicious year for us. And then, very much related with that, I want to discuss a little bit about His Holiness' historic, you know, visit to Washington, D.C. to meet with President Barack Obama. I think there has been lots of, <coughs> you know, reports about that. And I was, to be very frank, quite surprised, a little disappointed that especially we Tibetans, we are always talking about them, we are also talking about auspiciousness, how, you know, section of our people reacted, you know, to this historic, you know, one of the most important meetings that his Holiness had with President of the United States. First of all, the decision not to do a meeting with the President Obama and October was a decision that we together went to the Obama administration to. This is something that I want to make it very clear. His Holiness himself, during his recent visit, I know made it very clear in his remark to the media, especially when he spoke to the Tibetan media, <coughs> especially because he wanted Tibetans inside Tibet to get the right message. We took that position. Why? Why does His Holiness, you know, visit and meet with the President of the United States? His Holiness always says that there are many activities that he does. But when he comes here to Washington DC, for example, he does it purely to advance, to enhance the struggle of his people. If that is purpose, then you see, we will always rationally think what is the best way to do it? When is the best time to do it? So it was a decision explicitly with his holiness instructions that we ourselves, after lengthy discussions, mind you, I'm not saying that we just immediately said, oh, that's a great idea. We don't want to do meeting in October. No. But after lengthy discussions, examining advantages, disadvantages, explicitly under his holiness instruction, we took a decision not to do the meeting in October. And to be very frank, you now looking back, once again, this was again yet another confirmation how wise, how far-sighted His Holiness is. Look, this meeting that His Holiness just recently had with the President has become such an important meeting. Had he met with President Obama in October, well, it would have been just yet another meeting that he had with all the Presidents for the last 16, 17 years. But because we did not do, because of you know many considerations, that this meeting that he had with President recently has become such an important meeting. At the same time, it also gave an opportunity for the Tibetans, especially Tibetan friends, to also express how strongly they care about Tibet. So the President of the United States, 
Barack Obama, who always cared about God, who always had the highest regard for his holiness, has even much more deeper understanding of Tibet. And also as an elected person, he also knows what it really means to the American people. Because of this postponement of the meeting, he heard from thousands and thousands of Americans, from ordinary Americans to politicians. And it was very important because he himself understood that this issue is very important for my people. Similarly for the Chinese. I'm sure if the Chinese, you see, if they have the right, the kind of this common sense that you and I have, they must also be saying that, oh my God, you know, why do you make a fuss about his holiness meeting President Obama in October? As I said that, then it will happen just yet another meeting with the President of the United States that he had all the time. So I just wanted to, first of all, make it very clear because since you know, many of you have come from different parts of the United States, I want you to go back <laughs> and tell our friends and especially our own people that the decision not to do a meeting in October was a, was a mutual decision. That we, under His Holiness instructions, we ourselves did that. So that there's no misunderstanding about that. And then also it, during the meeting also, you know, I, you know, I just wanted to share with you, there's a lot of, <coughs> first of all, you know, I believe that, you know, we have to create really auspiciousness. And also, and a political struggle. Whatever we do, whatever we say, we well, should have a first in mind how the people in Beijing will see this. Not how you say, uh, you know, our own friends or how the little Tibetan community is going to see it. How will China react? So every activity that we do, every statement that we make, you should always keep in mind how is it going to be registered in Beijing. So even in that regard, you know, I was, you know, to be very candid, you know, disappointed with some of the kind of reactions. People seem to be more talking about, you know, oh, His Holiness exit from the White House, the garbage bags, and then without understanding anything about the White House, oh, he came out from the back door. First of all, you see, if you believe in auspiciousness, why do you want to create unauspiciousness? Because some of us made that mistake of talking more about coming from the back door and the garbage. Shifa News Agency then prominently displayed His Holiness image with the baggage bags. So this is lesson for us. This is lesson for us. We must always think how this is going to be seen in Beijing. We don't think about how this is going to be seen by our friends. How is this going to be seen? We have to make it, you know, and it has been successful. We have to make it clear to Chinese that this has been one of the most successful visit. And I can tell you because I have been involved with every meeting that His Holiness had with every president of the United States. And I can tell you that this has been one of the most successful meeting with any president. Now talking about even little things about, you know, coming out from the back door. That's rubbish. You see? Because his Holiness was given opportunity to make a remark to the press corps within the grounds of the White House. He had to exit from that door because that's exactly where we had the media people stationed. And that photo, I know some of you didn't like it, you know, but it was not released by the White House. This is a free country. Uh, there was one group of media people who was kind of given the task of, you know, having this, you know, opportunity with Holiness. There was another group that was covering the president's departure. I think he was leaving for, where was it? Denver, yes. There was another group of photographers who were standing there to cover the president's departure for Denver. So this group of photographers just took the opportunity. This is a free country.